Good morning. Actually, no, it's uh, it's afternoon. Guess where I am? Yes, Chaddy Cemetery. Honestly, I know it might sound like a bit of a weirdo, but I just feel better just coming back here. I've not been for ages, um, and that's partly because I've been starting a new job, or started a new job, but anyway, we've still got the weekends. And the person we're going to talk about today, you already know from the thumbnail, is Alfred Butterworth. <clears throat> now, Alfred, very, very, um, very prominent member of society in his time. So, um, as it says, he was born in 1835, I think. Oh, his, his, death, his birthday isn't on. But he was born in 1835 and he was, um, his father was a linen draper. So is that someone who makes curtains? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, Alfred, uh, when he was 13, he uh, entered into an apprenticeship at Platt Brothers. Now, interestingly enough, you see the over there. I don't know if you recognise that grave, but that's the grave of John Platt, the fellow who's got his statue in Alexander Park. So, yeah, um, Albert... Uh, at 13, started an apprenticeship at Platt Brothers. So Platt Brothers, uh, for those who don't know, um, in the 1800s, uh, during the cotton boom, um, they were the world's largest manufacturer uh, of cotton spinning machines. And they amassed a wealth of gigantic proportions. I think, I think when John Platt died, he was worth multi, multi, multi millions um, in today's money. <laughs> But anyway, we're not here to talk about John Platt, we're here to talk about Alfred. So basically, Alfred joined, <coughs> joined Platt Brothers when he was 13, and he did a six-year apprenticeship. Um, he's in this grave, by the way, with his wife, Mary, and I think his daughter. <sighs> yeah, poor bugger. Um, they had a daughter, but she died nine months. Her name was was Mary as well and James Butterworth of Southport family of Oldham I wonder if that's probably one of his sons or something uh, no probably not actually maybe it's his father that anyway here's the entrance to the the family vault but anyway I keep digressing don't I so yeah so Albert basically was uh, he did a he did a, a six year apprenticeship at Platts and then he joined his father's firm at Springbank Mill. Um, interestingly enough, I'm pretty right with that, it's that, that name of that mill, I'm pretty sure, but his house is called Springbank, so it all sort of fits in. We're gonna to go to the house because believe it or not, the house is still standing. But before we leave the grave, um, I just wanted to say that, basically Albert, when it, by the time, Alfred, sorry, by the time he left Platt Brothers, he uh, had a, a great understanding, a uh, great, what were the words they used? Basically, he felt, he felt sorry for the poor and he did everything he could to help people. Um, he ended up having, I think it was called Glebe Mill. Now, I'm going to try and find out where Glebe Mill was. I tried to look last night briefly, I'm sure I'll find it. Um, and I'm going to put some footage in for you because I want you, I'll put it in during the film, but the video. But... I want to uh, I want to show it you because it's actually people leaving his work, you know, after they've done a shift in his mill. People coming out, they've all got clogs on, and all the women are wearing shawls and stuff. Um, this grave here, by the way, just in case you didn't know, this is the grave of John Dodd. I've shown it before, did a video on it. If anyone knows the Hollies in Werneth, uh, that's the man that used to live there. Uh, so, yeah, right, what we'll do, we're going to make our way over to Werneth now. So, we've had a look at his grave. I'm going to go over to Werneth and we're going to go and find his house. Hey, look at this, just before we go. 
Um, for some reason, I just I just looked at this. But look, Benjamin Lee's of Springbank, Werneth. And he died in 1868. So this fella, all these people, lived in that house that uh, Alfred lived in uh, just before he did, I suppose. Leases. Right, everybody, we're now on Grange Avenue, which is in the coppice area of Oldham. Now, down there is Manchester Road. And then back up there, you've got um, Chamber Road. But this is the house I've brought you to see. Um, now, this house behind these gates is Springbank, basically. It's called Westlands uh, nowadays, but it's still standing. The house looks virtually the same as it was all those years ago um, when Alfred Butterworth owned it. It's a stunning house. Now, it's got to be, well, if you think about the grave that I've just shown you, so he wasn't the first owner. Okay, I've got a beautiful post box as well. This is the old, the old convent. Like I say, originally built for the Clegg family. Um, <coughs> I think they moved out in 1901. And then it became a nunnery. The nuns moved in. Anyway, let me tell you the rest of the story about Alfred. So this is where he lived. Um, later in life, he had the mill on Drury Lane. I've actually just driven past Drury to see if I could film it. The only reason I didn't was because to be quite honest with you, there's not anything to see. It's just very industrial, very modern industrials. It's not like it's, there's any interest in mills to look at. The back of this house has got big, I don't know if you can see through there, look, a big turret and a big windows. Um, it's all completely fenced off, so you can't get near it, <coughs> which is totally understandable because I wouldn't want people milling around either. But um, anyway, so yeah, Alfred, he, he basically uh, had a lot of sympathy for the poor and he gave people five shillings a week as long as they'd worked for him for 21 years and it didn't even matter if you didn't work for him anymore he would still give you five shillings per week to put in a pension pot for you the actual um, scheme wasn't rolled out nationally the pension scheme wasn't run, um, ran out nationally for another 10 years so he was like a, quite a groundbreaker he also invested in Manchester Ship Canal he invested in Oldham Infirmary or Bowdoin Park and um, yeah he just gave a lot, he gave a lot to charity but he also lived a very comfortable house in this beautiful beautiful house um, like I say nowadays it's called Westlands um, but as you've seen from the graves we've been to visit today you know the uh, it's a very old uh, house that's got a great deal of history. I wonder, I'm sure the present owners will know. Now, another interesting fact. Sorry, I missed this one out. Do you remember Sebastian Di Ferrante? Uh, you might not remember him. You'll know Ferrantes, won't you? Ferrante. He was an electrical engineer and basically he created, I'll put it in because I can't remember the terminology, but basically he created. I think it was a dynamo and basically it just changed everything um, it was a fantastic invention world changing invention now Ferrante was born in Liverpool to I think Italian parents I think his mother was a his father was Lithuanian and his mother was Italian I think um, anyway Ferrante uh, opened his mill or his place in you know, go down to Ferrante's site because I've got another story from down there so sorry um, he basically opened up his works in Hollywood and while he was here this is where he lived along with the Cleggs and another family which was called I think they were called Wilkin Wilkinson printed well they've been printing newspapers here for quite a few years in fact it's the mirror building on the other side 
Um, and this is where they used to print the Oldham Chronicle. And you need a pass anyway. So this site is, there used to be a place called Birch and Bower. And Birch and Bower was, I think it probably built in the 1600s, the house. And it was owned in the 1700s, early 18s. It was owned by a woman called Hannah Beswick. Now Hannah, I don't think she ever married in her life, but she basically lived, or she had an estate on this site. We'll be able to see something in a minute, I'm sure. But she had an estate on this site, and... Um, she, she was a very, very wealthy woman, very, very wealthy. And what she used to do, uh, there was a lot of trouble with the, um, with the, with, with, with the, the, the royalists and the, you know, the people who didn't want the royals anymore and the people who did and, you know, all, the, all this trouble. And there was gangs coming up and all sorts of nastiness going on. And she was frightened that she was going to lose her wealth. So what she did is she buried on this site, which you can't see, but she, uh, fellow were looking at me like I were a lunatic then. Uh, she buried on this site her gold, lots of it, lots of gold, diamonds, jewels, whatever. She was very wealthy. Anyway, she buried everything on the site and just left it there because well, she only knew where it was and it was safe and it was a massive estate. Um, so I'll get to the point. Anyway, during her lifetime and her brother's lifetime, her brother got really sick. He was really poorly. And um, basically the doctor came round one day, his breathing had slowed, and the doctor said, I'm really sorry, but he's dead. Couldn't find a pulse. Couldn't find anything, no sign of life. So, I don't know if you can hear that noise, they've got flagpoles and it's the wire it in the side of the flagpole. Yes, yeah, so basically the doctor said, look, I'm really sorry, there's nothing we can do. Um, he's dead. So apparently, back then they didn't do post-mortems and everything, so his body was still intact, but apparently, um, he was in the house on display in his coffin as they used to do back then and probably still do in some, some, some cases now. And um, we're going to walk here, I'm going to show you the metro station. For those of you that don't live in Oldham anymore, I forget time. So yeah, she, um, she went in to see her brother and she looked down at him in his coffin and she saw him breathing, she saw his chest rise. She was like, what? I thought you were supposed to be dead. So basically, um, she got the doctor around and she says he's not dead, he's not dead. So yeah, he, he, he wasn't dead. He basically, he must have been in some sort of coma and he was coming round. <coughs> so, from that day on, her, her, boyfriend, her boyfriend, her brother lived probably another 20 or 30 years after that. You know, he lived a long life. But the danger was, and this is what Hannah was scared of, she was scared that um, her brother could have been buried alive and she didn't want the same fate for herself, so she devised this cunning plan that she was going to leave all of her estate to a, I think it was a solicitor. But, in order to keep the estate and all the wealth that came with it, um, he basically had to bring her, he had to basically not bury her. She, she said she didn't want to be buried. Um, and... So what they did, when she died, they embalmed a body in this, um, like, wax. And every ten years, he would bring Hannah back to Birch and Bower, and he would put a body on display in the house. Now, rumour has it that a body was actually stored inside a grandfather clock. I'm not sure about that. Sounds a bit weird. How long and short of it is, he brought her body back for years and years and years and then I, obviously he passed away and then her body which was in this brown wax so this is the old site the old Ferranti uh, her body was then put on display at the National 
National History Museum in Manchester, or in the, in the, what are the one of the one of the museums in Manchester, not the National History, because that's in London, isn't it? But you know what I mean. Uh, it was put on display, and then as time went on, they decided, you know, this isn't right. We shouldn't be doing this. It's not an oddity. It's a person. She needs to be buried. So they actually buried her in Harper A uh, Cemetery, but the grave's unmarked, so no one knows where she's buried. But this is the other side of the, of the tale. Um, she basically, when she died, and you know, the estate moved on and other people moved in, um, she was seen several times. In fact, people say that they still see her now, um, wandering the grounds all around here. And they say the reason she's looking around the grounds is because she's looking for a, she's looking basically for a, for a gold that she buried all those years ago. The other interesting thing is, someone actually did find um, some of Hannah's gold uh, a few years ago, and um, well, say 100, about 100 and odd years ago, and he lived he lived a very, very, very comfortable life off it. Uh, it was a sizable amount that he found, but rumour has it that a gold's still here somewhere, but they've built for aunties on it, which is now the MEN media company uh, so yeah who knows who knows so I'm gonna go um, I will hopefully tomorrow I'll get out and do another video I've got something else planned something pretty decent um, today's video has been a bit haphazard it was supposed to be just to be about Alfred but no, you know what I'm like, I sort of swap and change a lot, so hopefully it's been of interest, hopefully you've liked the stories, and um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one, and, 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 and uh, thanks to everybody who's been subscribing, it's absolutely wonderful, um, thanks for watching, and sorry about the wind noise if there is any, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Hello everyone, I just wanted to show you this gorgeous view, I've just driving down Rippendon Road and look at this Ooh, it's cold Sorry, I can't hold it. I'm too close. But yeah, I just wanted to show it. Yeah, I thought it was gorgeous. That's uh, Shulver over there. Shulver Estate.